What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into the brand new Marauders, issue number 2. If you did not catch the issue number 1 relaunch, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this brand new Marauders team. Being being led by Kate Pride. She has assembled her brand new team made up of Aurora, Somnus, Bishop, Psylocke, Tempo, Dakin, and Cassandra Nova. And their first mission is saving the first mutants. Chasing down the clues from a strange Mysterium puzzle box. Inside, the writing said, the first blood spilled. Being led to the Shi'ar Empire, they are hiding secrets from the X-Men. The Empress believing that if these secrets are uncovered, it is going to make war with Mars. Because of this, we see the Secret Society, the Crimson Kin, they are put into action, and we have Eric the Red, who has been tasked with taking down the Marauders. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we pick up with issue number 2, we have a conversation between Xandra and Delphos the Red. Xandra being very uncomfortable with the idea that they are sending an armada after the Marauders to take them out. The mutants have always been their allies, but right now they are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Because if the Marauders do come here and discover the secrets that they are hiding, it will lead to inevitable war. But also, taking out the Marauders could lead to the very same thing. Xandra is just so conflicted, but at the end of the day, she does understand that there will be less bloodshed if they do not uncover the secrets. And so far throughout these stories, they have alluded to what this actually is. We have no idea what actually happened willing to take the lives of the Marauders. It has to be something of huge significance. Delphos the Red also letting it be known that she is seen to the rescue of Deathbird, and those responsible for her abduction, they will soon face justice. And these moves, they concern the Empress. Delphos the Red is taking these liberties into her own hand. She is not asking permission, she is just doing things in the way she sees best. She is also concerned because Do both Deathbird and Gladiator bent the knee when she came into the room. Xandra is beginning to see the Crimson Kin as a threat to the throne, as a threat to the power in the Shi'ar Empire. This is when we are taken over to the Marauders. Eric the Red has found himself on their ship, creating a bubble around them in space. This has created a kind of atmosphere, but it's also locked them into place. It makes it to where they have to have this confrontation with Eric the Red, and he has come with his final warning, letting the Marauders know that they need to give up this endeavor. They need to turn their ship around, and they need to go home, because if they don't, he has been given in orders to execute all of them. And Eric the Red, he has no time or patience for any of this saying that he has watched their species grow for such a very long time and they never amount to anything. So much so that they don't even know what that Mysterium puzzle box actually is. The Marauders unwilling to stand down and go into retreat. We see Eric the Red activate his hard skins. As we see this battle commence, we get a little bit of knowledge of what hard skins actually are. Now the Crimson Kin, they were able to discover a local population capable of bending the light force to their very will. Using Shi'ar science to hone this in, they were able to harvest their genes and it yielded the hard skin. This is a genetic therapy that allows each Kin Crimson Noble to wield red light force with but a simple thought. This is a product of thousand years of experimentation. It can turn one Ken Crimson Noble into a giant army with one simple thought. 
all of these hard skins, they replicate all of our marauders. But luckily, they're not really able to replicate all of their powers and abilities. So while these hard skins, they are formidable, they are not undefeatable. With Kate Pride unable to phase through these things because they are so dense that she is unable to do so. What she can do is get up close and personal, have her sword to his throat. With Bishop learning that he can absorb these hard skins, he takes one into his body, but with it taking it in. This is too much power. It is too much energy. From Bishop, we see a huge red explosion as Bishop is overloading with power. Kate Pride is trying to bring this all to an end. Picking up with Xandra and Gladiator, she is having a discussion with him trying to figure out what their next course of action is. Because right now she still feels very guilty on what they are about to do. People that have helped her time and time again, that have come to her aid and saved her life. But what she is really concerned about is that even her super guardians bow down to the Ken Crimson. But for the super guardians, this is something indoctrinated into them at a very early age. And their entire existence is to ensure that Xandra never has to see the dark dealings of the Empire. She's starting to recognize that she doesn't have as much power as she truly believed. And that there are a lot of secrets being hidden from her. Ones that she believes she should be making the decision on if she hears them or not. Even with all of this being said, she still cannot deny the gravity of the situation after being shown everything that she has seen. And for the sake of the Shi'ar Empire and the sake of all mutant kind, the truth must remain buried. Taking us back over to the Marauders, we have Bishop who is trying to get this power under control. This power being so strong, we see this little field, this bubble in space, it begins to collapse. Collapse. At this point, Kate Pride really does think she has the upper hand. Unfortunately, Eric the Red did not come alone. As this ship begins to fall apart, the bubble is collapsing in on them, which means their atmosphere is disappearing. In a matter of seconds, everything goes sideways for the Marauders. Trying to hold everything together, we see the entirety of the Marauders using their abilities together to try and hold on to as much atmosphere Atmosphere, oxygen and everything else that they have being able to create this little pocket in space this is only a temporary solution Eric the Red is able to get his hands on that Mysterium puzzle box Cassandra Nova is missing Tempo is no longer able to hold time recognizing that they only have under a minute of air left they have to figure out a plan and they have to do it very quickly. This is where Somnus gets an idea. With the aid of Psylocke, they are able to take everybody into his dreamscape. All of their consciousness have been brought into this place and this buys them some time. This gives them ample opportunity to devise a plan on how they're getting out of this situation. Meanwhile, planet side, we have Cassandra Nova going against one of the Ken Crimson. And we see Nova just wrecking while she's out there holding her own. The Marauders team is trying to figure out what the heck they are going to do. Now, I misspoke earlier. They have seven minutes. Seven minutes to try and figure out how to survive this. Luckily for them, inside the dreamscape, that seven minutes is seven days. With time moving much differently, the amount of time that they have been in here, it has only been seven seconds in the real world. While they try to figure out their next steps, we see their physical bodies floating out there in space. And we have the Shi'ar ship that comes into view. Xandra on board with her kin Crimson. They are letting it be known that now is the time to strike. Wipe out all of the Marauders. They have retrieved the box as needed. And there is only one last thing to do. And that will be the end of this issue.
So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I am really excited for the Marauders relaunch line, and that's because we're dealing with the cosmic aspects of Marvel, the cosmic aspects of mutant kind, having deep ties and connections with the Shi'ar Empire. They have relatively had a great partnership, but now something is threatening that. A deep, buried secret that makes Xandra even want to betray her friends. No matter how conflicted she is, this secret is so bad that she knows if it is told, then it will mean guaranteed war with the soul system. You know, one of my favorite things about the, the Power of X, the, the Hickman era, everything going on with Krakoa era, my favorite thing is mutants mixing their abilities and syncing together to be able to do amazing feats doing things that we never imagined the individual could do. And I love how much we have expanded on every aspect of that. That's why we see the X-Men teaming up so much more now. Because they've come to the realization that they are so much stronger together. Take for example, the Marauders are literally floating in space, sitting in a dreamscape where they can plan for the next 7 freaking days on what they are going to do. Somnus being able to see what is going on with their physical bodies. And with so many mutants being out there, being so many different combinations, the potential is literally limitless on what you can do. That's why it's really unfortunate we haven't seen more of these mutants that are on Mars. Supposedly millions of them, yet we have only gotten very small fractions. I'm really hoping that X-Men Red is going to open that door much wider for us. Because there is so much untapped potential to be focusing on all of these regular teams like X-Force, X-Factor, all of that stuff, New Mutant, so on and so forth. But to exclude such a huge chunk of the overall lore and everything going on, I feel like it's going to be very regrettable for them once they get to the end of this story. Once we see the Hickman era the Krakoan era truly come to an end. Now, I know the Hickman era is kind of over, but this is his baby, if you will. But once all of this finally shuts the door, closes the book, I really hope that they have told us some great stories and expanded the mutant universe to include all of these millions of mutants. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and until the next breakdown.